Hey, Brooke Scholars, welcome back to Remote Learning with me, Mr. Scott. How are you? Happy Wednesday. Uh, I'm really excited for today's reading because today we're going to eat dirt. Yeah, that's right. We're going to eat dirt. I'm so excited. What's your favorite kind of dirt to eat? Oh, that's a good one. I like that one too. I like rain dirt best. That's after it's rained and the, the dirt is all wet and soggy and sloshy and you can just scoop it right out of the ground and mm, eat it up. Yeah, I love eating dirt. What's that you say? You've never eaten dirt before? Really? Oh my goodness, you don't know what you're missing. Nah, I'm just kidding, of course. We're not really gonna eat any dirt. Um, but we do have something very interesting today. We've got a recipe, which I think is the first time we've ever had uh, a recipe on this incredible, um, let's see, I'll do orange. Um, on this, uh, on our distance learning videos before. So this is nonfiction, but more importantly, it's considered a recipe. Now, when you're reading over a recipe, uh, it's, there's, one of the most important things that you need to know is how the author has structured this piece of writing, okay? So well, they do it in a particular order, um, and they do that for a very good reason. So here's what we're going to do. Let's read through the recipe, and uh, then we'll talk about how this, this is structured and organized, okay? Uh, so dirt for dessert. Here we go. Dirt is very helpful in planting gardens and building roads. Did you know there is a kind of dirt that you can eat? It is a dessert called dirt cake. This tasty treat is fun and easy to make. Okay, here we go. Items to make the cake. One package of chocolate cookies, one stick of butter, one package of soft cream cheese, two boxes of instant chocolate pudding mix, three cups of milk, one container of whipped cream, 15 candy worms. Now, here are the supplies you will need. A one-gallon plastic bag, a rolling pin, one large bowl, measuring cups, an electric mixer, one big wooden spoon, one new medium-sized flower pot. This will be used in place of a pan. Three new plastic flowers. What to do? Here are the directions. Let's do this. Number one, put the cookies into the plastic bag, tightly close the bag. Press the rolling pin over the bag to crush the cookies into crumbs. You will use these crumbs later as the dirt in the dessert. Number three, place the butter and cream cheese in a large bowl. Ask an adult to help you use the mixer. Blend the butter and cream cheese until the mixture is smooth. Four, next add the milk, chocolate pudding mix, and whipped cream to the bowl. With a wooden spoon, stir the mixture until it looks creamy. Mm. Number five, then place half of the cookie crumbs into the bowl and stir well. Number six, you can now pour this mixture into the flower pot. Number seven, cover the top of the mixture with the remaining cookie crumbs. Step number eight, carefully tuck the candy worms into the top of the cake. Stick the plastic flowers around the worms. Finally, number nine, put your cake in the refrigerator for about three hours. Your cake will look like a real pl pl plant with dirt, worms, and flowers. The cake will serve about 15 people. It will be the best dirt you will ever eat. Ah! Uh, so here's a picture of what it could look like at the end. Uh, now, I don't want anyone to get confused. Nobody's really eating dirt here. Don't do that. Uh, but if you are a baker or if you're into cooking uh, and uh, you know doing things with food, food for preparation, uh, you absolutely could use this recipe and make this, and this is how it could turn out. We've got the flower pot, and then that's not really dirt in there, right? Although it could be a really cool prank, right? You make this, and then you like call for someone in your house, and they come in, and you're sitting there with a flower pot eating what looks to be dirt. It's not really dirt. Don't eat dirt. Uh, <laughs> ah, what are you doing eating dirt? Um, that could be a fun prank. Uh, anyway, yeah, so this is a fun activity that you can do with your family. Now it's time to talk about how the author organized this recipe, what structure was put into place, and why are most recipes organized in this particular way. 
Well, most of the recipes that we see either in a recipe book or online or in a magazine um, are always organized in this way. They start off by explaining the things that you will need to get. It says items to make the cake. The ingredients, right? And the ingredients are always listed at the top. It's always one of the very first things um, that uh, is at the top of the page. Why do you think the authors, uh, d why do you think the author did that? Right, exactly. You cannot prepare this dirt cake. You can't make it without certain ingredients. And if you're missing even just one of these ingredients, you probably can't make the cake. There's no point reading through all of the directions about how you're supposed to do it. And then by the time you get down to the bottom and you're really excited to make your dirt cake and then you find out, oh, I can't because I don't have the things that I need. So after ingredients, then it goes on to say the supplies that you will need. And it lists out all of the different things that you can use. Um, I suppose you could probably get along maybe without a rolling pin. You could find something else to crush up the cookies or just do it by hand. Um, instead of an electric mixer, you might just use like a wooden spoon to mix it all uh, together like that. But most of the things that are listed here are things that you're going to have to have in order to make it uh, in the same way that is described in the directions at the bottom of the page. Ingredients first, then we get the supplies that you need, and finally we get to the directions. Now, it's kind of hard to, it, even as I was reading it out loud to you guys, like it was kind of hard for me to kind of picture all of the things that happen, you know? That's that's kind of what where the challenge can be when you're trying to understand what to do with the recipe. With a story, of course, you've got the character and they do something and they have a problem and they do something else and then eventually they solve it, and that's the end of the story. And with other nonfiction articles, you get maybe the blurb, you get the title, uh, and then you get different sections, and then you get a conclusion at the end. With recipes, it's a little bit difficult um, to actually remember all of the steps, which is why they list it out there. One of the things to note about recipes and how you should go about understanding them is look for the verbs. They're always loaded with verbs. And if you don't believe me, um, we can take a closer look here and uh, I can show you that. Uh, let's see. So, uh, yeah, of course, you've got to put the uh, cookies into the plastic bag. You have to close it tightly. You have to press uh, until they uh, turn into crumbs, and then you will use them later. And then you will place the butter and the cream, and you will ask, and you will blend, and you will add. And uh, let's see, you're stirring. Oh, very good. And then, then, of course, you've got to put it into a bowl, Place it in the bowl. Now you can pour this mixture into the flour pot. Cover the top. Carefully tuck. Uh, that's a good one. Um, and then finally down here, is it going to let me go down? No, it's not. Change back to the arrow. Move the page. And uh, we've got, you know, we've got to put it in the refrigerator. Your cake will look like a real one. You can serve um, this to people. So, yeah, there's always a whole bunch of um, really interesting verbs that you get when uh, you're when the author is describing uh, the directions and how you're supposed to go about uh, doing all of this and, and making and making your dirt cake. So if you are a um, baker, uh, I'm, I'm not much of a baker. I really should, I should make some dirt cake. Uh, it sounds actually delicious, even though it looks like dirt. Don't eat dirt, okay? I was just kidding in the beginning. Uh, anyway, so yes, uh, your job right now, my friends, of course, is to go off and answer the uh, following questions, the multiple choice and the short answer, uh, and then take a picture and upload it onto Seesaw. And if you are someone who's a little um, magician in the kitchen, uh, Go ahead and make some dirt cake and take a picture of that and put it on Seesaw. Uh, your teachers would absolutely love to see that. That's so, super cool. All right, my friends. Well, that's it from me. Have a wonderful Wednesday. Enjoy the rest of your day. Can't wait to see your work up on Seesaw. For me, Mr. Scott, the ultimate champion, I'll see you back here on the world's greatest YouTube channel with these incredible second grade teachers. Uh, and I will look forward to seeing you then. Have a great rest of your day, everybody. Bye.